Hello, my name is Joe Hornacek. Today's date is February 13th, 2021. And today I will be talking about PCP Robot in a podcast, surprise podcast. So, adjust this microphone. So I decided to work on music more than the video for the last year and a half or so decided that the video was taking up too much time it was just too hard to do I would broken my leg a couple years ago I was off for six months and I was able to accumulate some new keyboards that were coming out by Moog I got the grandmother and I bought an iPad and the iPad I have is actually really cool because it's got this new chip in there that you could record 4k video really good and so I'm really excited about that, even though I still have not worked on any videos because I've been so busy working as a construction. And the cool thing is, is that I decided just to concentrate more on music. So I have a lot of old ideas that were brought back to life. And the funny thing about music is the more you practice, the more you develop your memory and you actually start to remember really old things when you first started trying to make music, <coughs> all those things that you had lived with before come with those old memories. So the more you practice, the more you remember the old things that you learned, then you remember other things too. So I made this album. It's called Matrix. It's a 12-song album. And these were songs that I had made with equipment that I've been accumulating for over the years, the MC-505, the R70, and a couple more keyboards, the Sub-37, and the Grandmother. And I also have some beats that I made on Reason. So this song's called Matrix. It's a 12-13 song album, and it's available on Bandcamp. I also made a three song album called Detroit 2020. I wanted to get music out by 2020. So I was able to, to release two albums and then a, an extra album that is still in the works called Just In Case. And this album was supposed to be the best of music that I've made over the years that have lyrics and me doing vocals on. Just In Case was a song that was written a long time ago, back in the 90s, when I lived in Waterford with the 30 Minutes of Madness crew. I had developed a song by myself in a room on an A-track, and it's just, just a riff that was sitting around for a long time with some cool lyrics, and I was able to keep it going. I noticed that the songs I make turn out pretty good if I spend a good amount of time, about a month per song. It turns out pretty good. So I made the song called Just In Case and I ended up calling the album Just In Case. And there's gonna be probably about 12 or 13 songs. I just recently got a 24 track reel to reel recorder going that the heads need to be cleaned on and it still needs a little bit of elbow grease, I think, the old tape machine got working but some of the tracks cut out for some reason I think it might need to be demagnetized I was able to record a song called warm and that was a song that I made also back in the 90s not too much going on just living life trying to reach out with people and and making new friends I just want to say that if I could put a bit of influence on something, <clears throat> it's for people to not worry about what they don't have and what they do have and, and be to be contempt and, and try to build on what they have and, and not to not to steal or, or be jealous of anybody because that, that, that'll hurt a lot of things and it puts like a negative effect on everything. So. You kind of want to have this mentality to to just accept the things that you 
the way they are and and to really show positivity towards it and and to build momentum because that that's what really makes things happen i think is just to go that's you know to use that strength that you already have that inner strength you know and and to make light upon things that are dark I know I haven't made a podcast in a while. Over the years, Behringer has come through, Eli and his team from Germany. And they've been coming out with some really cool things for, for really cheap. People are are making their own music rooms and stuff like that and really getting to the Euro rack technology and and using their minds to explore and I think that's a good thing. I think that's uh, something positive that that people can have a new hobby to work on and to share ideas. I wish I could make more shows, go to see more music acts and bands and stuff like that. I think there should be a, more of a music trade thing where people can help each other make a living doing the music thing, more or less. Because of all this going on as far as the music and the equipment coming out and the social media. So someone requested that I talk about skateboarding the last time I did a podcast. And skateboarding is something I did when I was at a younger age, about 14 years old, I remember wanting to be a professional. And skateboarding is pretty good. I remember the old Paul Peralta team from the 90s. They had Mike McGill, Tony Hawk, Rodney Mullen, Tommy Grow, and Lance Mountain. And those guys are like, like, really deep in my, my soul. Like, they started a movement from California, and Stacy Perota made these movies of them in the '80s, and they were really good VHS movies. They made it really big. They were these clean cut guys, and Tony Hawk really got into half pipes. And this is before those big, huge quarter pipes that they have in the X Games now. They just really were progressive and they had a really cool style to their videos that they would make and they incorporated humor and, and really neat music. And it made everybody just want to skate. That was the most important thing in my life at the time. I didn't want to go to school. I wanted to skateboard. And I wanted to be a professional skateboarder like the Bones Brigade. And... <laughs> For a couple years at that age, that's all I really cared about. And my father, somehow I got my father to build me a skateboard ramp in our backyard because he wanted to teach me how to do rough carpentry. And we ended up digging some post holes and putting the posts in them and cementing the posts in the ground right at the, right at the 43 mark where it should be to build a house. So the way he was showing me how a house could be built if you put four by four posts into the ground. And we had a really nice messed up skateboard ramp. I remember reading an article about people designing skateboard ramps in the 80s. And it was so true. There was a just a wave of people building skateboard ramps and they just they had no idea what they were doing. So. The, the popular thing to do was to, to cut the ramp down into a mini ramp. And that's what we did. We cut the ramp down into a mini ramp. And I bought my friend's skateboard ramp who lived down the street and reconnected the two ramps together. And <coughs> it was something that I could not do by myself. I had to have my friends help me do it. And the next thing you know, the thing was just built. And we had this really cool hip you could go down one ramp and then ramp to ramp transfer over to the other ramp. 
and some guys would come and do some really cool tricks and then I started to get pretty good at it at one time and I was a pretty good skater. I was about 15 years old and I could do kickflip to axles and uh, no-handed blunt fakies and ramp to ramp transfers and uh, a bunch of other stuff I can't remember. I do remember getting hurt though a lot like beat up the most I'll probably ever get beat up my shins would just be all bashed up all over the place I'd be bloody every day uh, I used to fall off my ramp and the, the, the skateboard would go up over eight foot and then come straight down and, and then hit me in the head and then that was the the most hurt I have ever gotten before my life I thought I was going to die and I used to fall like that all the time. These guys that would pick on me for wearing knee pads. The one guy, he's a real big dude. I'm not going to say his name, but he came over with his girlfriend to watch me skateboard one time. He just saw how bad I'd get beat up over skateboarding. And he goes, oh, I'm just leaving him alone. I see how hard he fell. <laughs> but, yeah, I grew up kind of in a rough neighborhood. I grew up in the Brooklyn sub. So There's some pretty... Uh, Pretty crazy things that happened back then. We used to we used to gang up and fight each other and stuff like that. And some pretty bad stuff go down. People used to get robbed. And, but it kind of changed up. Rochester grew up to be this nice town after a while. But the Brooklyn subs got its it's got its stories. So anyway, my next project is going to be to keep completing music albums I still want to do videos and get some pictures of my location where I'm at right now so if there's anything you want me to talk about in another podcast just comment please like subscribe comment ring the bell for more YouTube PCB robot videos I, I think I want to try to make more PCB robot stuff with the little little robots that I make from com computer parts and clay and paint and do more stories that I have ideas I've written down. I still got a lot of ideas that try to incorporate the PCP robot raps so I can watch the raps and then remember the ideas and communicate with people. So any comments about that would be cool because that would really actually get PCP robot going. I'd like to get a comic going. <coughs> A comic, uh, live feeds, and and uh, Kickstarter projects, stuff like that. Just little things. Hopefully, work up to a you know big movie like Star Wars. What else? Not too much else. Just a, a check in podcast. So this is Joe Hornacek signing off. Thanks.